Hello again boys and girls, we're back at the car and just a bit of an update really on where we are and what we're doing next. Um, I uploaded a much much longer video than I ordinarily would do and that was because I'd had comments about questions on welding or welder settings so um, that video is as we speak now or as I speak uploading to the internet so I haven't had an opportunity for anyone to see it and um, give me feedback on whether or not they want long videos like that or not so god knows what i'm going to do in this one It'll probably be a hybrid between the two one thing i did notice is that i never hold the camera close enough to the world to really see what's going on so um, it's probably not that useful anyway this was uh, all closed up yesterday so the sill is now complete where it dives under the front wing I'm missing the bit there, it should have extended lower and then been hammered round and I forgot to do that which is a shame because I was trying to do it neatly. But we're not so very far away from being able to put um, the new lower wing section that I've been fabricating on, so that's quite exciting. But um, I want to show you what that's supposed to look like on another car, so I'm going to turn the camera off, go to another car, flick it back on, so hopefully remember what that looks like and the next shot you should see will be a car that's um, never been attacked. Hopefully, seamlessly, we are now looking at the other car. Well, I know I am, but whether you are, I'm not sure. Um, this car does have issues and I will reveal it in a video in the future, but not right now. Um, <clears throat> you can see the kind of shape that we were going for, or I'm going for, that is the bit I've repaired and unfortunately I forgot that that bit was meant to be on there as well so I need to do that. The front wing on this one looks like somebody's jacked on it and smashed it up which hasn't really helped and then stone chipped the very lower edge of it. I don't know whether that's factory, I presume it isn't. Um, but yeah that's what I have to replicate now. I've got that bit which I cut out and retained from the original car and I've fabricated pretty much everything from there downwards. I just need to put it in the car, weld it in nicely and hopefully end up with a really nice body line like that. Uh, so yeah, let's go and get on with that bit. I think the first thing I'm going to do today is neaten up this bit and consolidate what it was that was meant to be going on here. So I'm going to grind that back, give myself some clearance so I can put another piece of steel on there, leave it long and then tap it round to form that returned edge. Some hammering later, I've made myself a little bit of angle effectively, but also pushed that back with the chisel and the hammer just so that that will now sit in and hopefully I can weld it in and then kind of dress it so it looks flush and then it'll just make that bit look a little bit more finished. So I've got my little piece to go in there, put the holes in now for plug welding. I also started putting the holes and the return on that bit. Um, I couldn't fit it in the vise to hammer it over neatly so I've started off with the pliers but we'll have to hammer it afterwards on the car but yeah I'm gonna weld that bit in now and um, hopefully be able to linish it smooth so it looks nice. We'll have a go. Those first two tacks were on the absolute minimum settings, which is why they didn't burn in a lot. But that's good because it means that if I wanted to, I could have broken them off. That front one didn't hold anyway because it just melted onto the top, but it didn't get any penetration into the thing on the back. So now I've cranked it up to two max seven, so four sixths of its range. Mm -hmm. 
that was a bit too slow on the wire feed and you could hear it kind of burning back not that fizzing you get with fried eggs that they always talk about but a bit more intermittent splattery but it ain't gonna fall off I'm just hammering it up to make sure there's no void behind so otherwise the heat again wouldn't be going into the rear surface it would just be filling up a void uh, and you know the hole I've drilled rather than actually penetrating through onto the back in fact I'll turn the wire feed up a bit so that's cock that was slightly better it could probably go a bit higher again but we'll be all right I don't think I'm going to be able to get the levels right so that is a seamless transition but what I will do is put a bead of welding above there along there grind it smooth and then it will just have to be dressed in with filler along here but to the eye it should still look like it's original I'm going to turn the welder back down a bit now so we are now on mid-range power on my little welder That's another indication that the, the wire feed was too slow because the bead burnt back into the into the gun itself. Which is bad. this somewhere where it isn't going to get in the way of the welding and you can still see this metal is all really cold at the moment which is ideal for welding up the ends of things which you know are going to burn back when they get hot so I'm deliberately going to fire a couple of shots into here just trying to close that up because if I've put loads of heat into here and then welded down to that bit as soon as I get there, it'll just go and, and disappear. So I've actually managed to join those bits. There's no way I would have done that had I started here and put all of this heat into this area. The welding seems to be about as much um, managing heat flow as it is actually getting metal to stick together. The periodically wire brush it just because all of the oxides that come off you know the burning gas and the burning impurities on the metal they can just mean for crappy welds or the weld doesn't start off quite as neatly as it would otherwise
gonna nip that big pert tack off because it's not doing anything other than getting in the way at the moment. So with a nice, clean, crisp sanding disc, which still has a bit of a point on it, like that one, should be able to get in there nicely. You should really unplug these when you're changing discs in case you cut your arms and legs off by pressing the wrong button. looking pretty good especially along the bottom which is nice but we'll just put a tiny bit more in there and again I'm starting at the end that would potentially burn away I've sanded quite a lot through there so it will be a lot thinner than the 1.2 mil it originally was In fact, you can see it did try and burn away a little bit there. So by the time that has got under seal on it, stone chip and the tiniest bit of filler, you won't see any of that. That'll all be gone and it'll all look like one nice undisturbed original sill. Um, now I'm going to go and work out where I need to drill that drain hole, put that in, then I can paint all of this, protect it, and then get ready to weld the next panel on top. Got my drain plug hole in there. It's not quite as big as the original was, but um, that's no bad thing really. So that's in there. Um, there's actually part of a drill bit in there as well because I managed to snap it off and then I opened it up a little bit bigger with the Dremel tool. So I'm gonna seam seal that bit and then red oxide it or vice versa. Well, I've opted for um, red oxide first again just so I can get it in all of the nooks and crannies and uh, I think this dries faster than the seam sealer as well
Um, down here looking at what metal I've got and where I can join it all back in and stuff like that. Thinking about the next step. That's all really good metal, that's why I left it. And it gave me the crucial kind of flare that would have been difficult for me to replicate perfectly. I don't know what kind of underseal is on here, but it's basically like, I don't know, uh, crude oil that's solidified over decades. It's real thick, petrol-y stuff, and it's quite difficult to get off. It either flicks and smears everywhere, or it just doesn't come off. <laughs> We're kind of getting to the point where I can finalise the position of that wing and clamp it. I just need to make sure that it's straight relative to the line of the sill. <laughs> That's my girlfriend being funny. So that will go like so. It could come in a bit. That's actually sitting proud. I'd like to bend it in if I can. At the moment that's diving in a bit. So it does want to come out a little, not that much. I think there's still so much flexibility in a lot of this that I'll have to address that as I tack the new panel in on top. That, I don't know whether that got recorded me cleaning that bit up, but that's um, the section that showed how the wheel arch finished, uh, or the wing finished into the wheel arch. So that's gonna go in there somewhere, like so. Because again, that, when you've got stuff that's quite a complicated shape, I try and keep it if I can. And it just saves trying to fabricate stuff. So that can go in there like so. Right, well I've been waiting for seam seeder and paint to dry. I've been fanning around with this bit again. Um, I've marked off where I'm going to cut it. And that means that I can do the final shaping of this. to make sure I get a nice flare there and a nice curve down here. Because at the moment it's a bit kind of abrupt to say the least. So I'm going to chop that off then start doing the final shaping. You can 
see what I'm going for here. So when that is pushed up tight, that body gap will look really good. That I'll tack that there first, then I can push and bend that in until I get that nice curvy shape. And I'll just chase it all the way through to the front. And then hopefully we'll be somewhere very close to having a full wing back on the car. Um, I'm never going to be able to get to the back side of this again. And what I tend to do, particularly with parts of the car that are very low to the ground, is drop it on the floor like that and then go and get some waterproof like top coat like just an, a, a black can of spray paint and tosh a load of it on there and some of it will burn out and that's fine but it'll be up here where I'm seam welding it um, that bit gets tapped around and plug welded that bit gets plug welded and all of that I can absolutely douse in um, cavity wax stuff through that hole so I'm going to go find a can of gloss, black, something or other, slap it on here and then leave it overnight until it um, goes off hard and then I can weld it on the car tomorrow. So I shall be using some acrylic satin black. Super smooth finish. And it's not for design. It just happens to be I've got some dregs of cans and I might as well use them up. But it is waterproof stuff. Well, not waterproof, but you know, it's got a top coat to it. So bits like that, it's the perfect place for rust to start. So if I get it all completely saturated, should be onto a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Oh crap, you can see it already reacting with something toss he says then just carrying on spraying on um, in which case on the car let's go and put some enamel <coughs> get the lid off. Reacts, whether it's the red oxide stuff or whether it's the seams here. That is not a happy nozzle. Cool. Right, that's it for tonight. Um, I probably won't bother uploading this. I'll probably do it once I've actually welded the next bit on. So I don't really know why I'm telling you that because in a matter of moments it'll be tomorrow for you. As if by magic it is 24 hours later, give or take. All of that is now hard and the paint has gone off. This was the bit that I was worried was reacting, but it hasn't. Apart from that bit down there, but all of that's probably going to burn back anyway when I plug weld it. But we have got a little bit of work to do and then that can go on there, which is pretty exciting really. Because then that is, that whole front wing, um, once these spot welds are put in, that'll be that whole front wing done. So I will be smug and happy. Just had a bit of a clean up down there before I get on with the next bit and again I'm just looking at the way that that wing finishes it's a bit hard to see with all of this cling film on here but what I don't want is for that wing to obviously dive in or dive out 
when I've repaired the bottom edge of it. At the moment, I haven't done anything with it. I've just clamped it in position. But if we release that clamp, it's come out a bit, reclamp it, stays there. And that, it's already starting to look a little bit better. Then I have my friend, Mr. Straight Edge. I can go on there. So you can see that that end there isn't quite proud but that's the same on pretty much all of the sd ones i've had that's just the way they are so if i get that parallel it's pretty close maybe he wants to come out a tad but we are talking nat's cock territory let's have a look at that now we're just releasing that clamp and then nipping it back up what have we got now That's pretty good. I think I'll leave it there. If I bring it out anymore, I'll be missing at the bottom here. I can smash that bit out, which I probably will do, because it's still quite flexible. But other than that, I think I'm gonna clamp that there. I'll do a couple of spot welds in here, just to stop it welding, uh, sorry, just to stop it moving. Then I can get rid of that clamp and weld the bottom bit on. Just cleaned up along here where I welded. Uh, with the sanding disc and actually that's come out really nicely. I cleaned off that bit a little bit more and then took the overspray off my lower edge of the wing. I've also tossed a tiny bit more black paint in some of these bits where the paint hadn't quite filled in all of the gaps. And now I am preparing this panel to go on. I'm happy with the overall shape and now I've got my big ugly tack in there. There this can't move much that end can still come in and that's what i want to do so that this is all tucked in as far as i can and that bit is parallel to that bit so i'm going to clamp up the bottom and then just make some final checks on the overall profile of everything before i then start trying to weld it in so let's go find some these. I used to have so many clamps and G clamps and mole grips but I don't know what I've done with them. That is a really useful one incidentally because you can clamp panels together and then still weld, plug weld in between them. So that's ideal for down here. What it wants to do at the moment is not sit up high enough. Down here, it doesn't want to sit up flush. Probably because that's where I built up some layers of weld when I put that back on. Maybe I put too much in there. The other problem is where I lovingly recreated that folded lip to be the same as the original wing that's stopping it you can see the bruising where it's hitting so i'm just going to sand through that and then repaint it afterwards
it all nice and thick because I won't get in there again. Put a little bit more on there as well, just because I can. Right, so I can go away. I've noticed I didn't go crazy cleaning off the paint on the back side of here or on the actual car that's because I'll go through here with a scribe and clean it off afterwards where I'm going to be welding but it means that the majority of the metal behind there that I'm never going to be able to get to again will remain treated The old safety squint again. I shouldn't really be doing that. Ow! But this will work. I can push that in and tack it, and I'm not changing particularly where the wing's sitting. So that's excellent. Um, this, I think I've got a bit more clearance in there. So I can tap this up now before I clamp it again and then do those welds. Well, I'll try anyway might not want to go see it did move slightly which is good enough for me so I'm going to get a scribe clean off in there now in fact I have a broken drill bit somewhere maybe that'll work this is an old blunt spot weld drill bit so hopefully we'll still Just using that to get rid of the paint. Now I've got a really nice surface to weld into um, and I'm going to aim the welder at the back of the hole not the front so that I'm definitely filling back first and getting heat into that surface first and then melting it into my top panel. Uh, I'll put the camera somewhere useful. I know what better when welding than to stick this camera on a massive can of flammable liquid just happens to be about the right size so hopefully you can see what's going on and part of what's going on won't be me in agony on fire so again weld is going up to a rather healthy level that's four stages out of six Incidentally, I've decided I might do a, well, when I say decided, I probably will do a sort of welding tutorial video, not preaching about how to do it, but just some, some of the ways that I go about doing it. And maybe a bit of an introduction to my welder and why, why I chose it and why I continue to use it and why I recommend it to my friends. This one being much closer to that edge will probably want to burn through so I might cut the cut the weld short just if it looks like it's going to do that. I've 
got there just in time. I think it was about to go. We've got a nice flat world there. And if I release this, um, it shouldn't spring apart. Hopefully it won't. If it does, then I'll be welding it again. Good, right, it's another test. Let's get a chisel. You can sometimes feel whether you've got the penetration. There's so many layers of steel here. I don't think that will be the case. Yeah, it's just dead flat on the backside. But um, just as a scientific experiment, let's try twatting it with a chisel. I don't really want to do this because it's going to ruin my lovely work. But All right, so that's not coming off. This one might because actually I don't think it will, but. Um, it's more likely of the two. Right, there's no way that's coming off. So those are both good welds and I'm happy with them. Because um, I'm happy with those two, this one, I probably popped the hole a bit too low. And if you look in the back there, only just on the um, chassis rail, uh, not chassis rail, inner sill, or only just pick it up on it. But I will still endeavor to try and weld onto it. It just means that I'll have to go a bit easier in case I burn through that bottom lip now, because that's quite thin. So I'll probably aim the weld up and inside up there and do sort of pulse trigger until that's all filled up again. So that first weld is into the back. So I know I'm getting a penetration there. So even if I just fill in that now, it should all be joined together. You can see these little stalag, what are they, stalag mites? Stalag tights, whatever, dribbles. That's the impurities from the paint carbonizing making gases which then blow out and as they expand like little volcanoes and pushing the molten metal pool ahead of them which is really annoying because if you set that off it will probably end up looking like an aero bar let's just have a look So you can just see what I mean. There's some tiny little voids and pockets there, which you don't really want. But in the grand scheme of things, when this has got stone chip paint sealer, you name it on there. I'm not worried about tiny little voids like that. That one and that one, because I had the heat on there for longer and I didn't release the trigger, any pockets of gas were getting blown out as I was welding and pushed out of the way by the shielding gas coming out of the nozzle. So that's why those two look all right. It's not really that they were cleaned any better. There was still paint, all of this paint and sealer behind there. It just got burnt off as fast as I was welding it. I'm gonna now tack a few more along here and push that bit in and tack that there's still some movement here and I just want to make sure that's tacked in the right place before I start welding towards it. Because if I welded along there in that line, this could be going up or down or in or out without me really noticing. So if I get it all tacked in perfect first, then there's less potential for fuck uppery.
trying to get that nice gentle flare. So, trying to get that nice gentle flare in here, so I was just pushing that in. If you go and look at Rover SD1s and shoulders and things, they're almost always like this, so no big drama. They come out of the factory like that. It would just be nice if I'm doing it to get it as good as I can. See, I'm happy with that because that's all still parallel. This leading edge, actually, when you look at the sill, that's, unless my straight edge is bent, which I don't think it is. Can you see how it's diving away there and we've got a bit of a gap up here all the way along the rest of it? It's dead straight parallel. So that is something going on with the sill itself rather than the wing. If I now slide this along here, if you see over there, I'm still parallel straight with the edge all the way through the sill dives away comes out to our wing and then it looks like it's looks like our wings diving in and away <coughs> so i'm still going to pull this out a tad before i try and tack it then a bit of the old one-handed magic here yeah. Washed in attack there. Have another look at this. I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it. So, with that tack in, I can now start tacking my way along here. Then the last thing will be to smash these two down here, sorry, until they're in some sort of area of contact. I'm also going to go out to the other car I've got and just check how that shape format so i might even go and get a carpal template off the other wing or the other car to make sure i get it right because i'm welding onto the top surface of some 1.1 1.2 mil steel i've still got the welder set quite high because otherwise it would just wouldn't penetrate If I was butt welding, I'd have it turned a lot lower. You probably wouldn't see proper car restorers using a claw hammer, but I can't find my actual panel beating hammer, and this kind of does the job. As well as being good for pulling nails out of wood. more little impurities now I've got those tacks I can nip them off flat get in there with this, the um, flap wheel or the uh, sanding disc and clean it all off again
Here the gun's not quite happy there. Don't know why. Maybe it's not clean enough inside. Periodically you see me hitting stuff and it's um, just trying to close surfaces together. One is you get better heat transfer between the two and you're less likely to burn one piece away from the other because um, all of the heat's going into that making it molten rather than it being shared between the two. But also on a panel where I've painted the backside I accept that there's going to be paint and fumes and things burning off and those gases go up, they come out of these holes and they blow your shielding gas away and you just get shitty welds because it's all really impure so if I close that up there's less way for gas to come out and ruin my welds over here I didn't bother because it was pretty much sitting on it cock on perfect anyway but here it's a bit gappy again you shouldn't really be using the a claw hammer and a wood chisel. There's probably stuff much better for the job, but I don't have it and I'm too tight to go and buy it. That's the other thing that I've noticed I do that other people don't uh, and it's against everything that people tell you. You're supposed to weld that way pushing the shielding gas onto the bit you're going to weld next to. But that really only seems to apply if you're doing seam welding on big pieces of metal. This kind of on off type of welding where I'm attempting to build up a seam so it's a seam in the fact that all of this metal was kind of heated at the same time making little stitches but i bet if you cut through that with a grinder lengthways all of that would be sort of homogenous there wouldn't be any voids there wouldn't be any cold bits hot bits whatever it should be okay but 
when I do it, I weld attack and then the first attack I hold the trigger for quite a long time so it gets hot and puts all the heat in the metal and then after that the, num the, the length of time I hold the trigger is a lot lower because if I did the same length it would just burn a hole but I work back from the tack I've just done because I know that that tack when it was put in was decent metal where all of the paint and the oxides in that area had been burnt off and although I'm not pushing gas onto it, I'm welding so soon after that weld was formed that it doesn't really matter. So I'm welding backwards compared to what people, I think, tell you to do. But it seems to work better. Because if I go, I'll do this one going that way now. But what you'll see is that um, it doesn't matter so much here because this is actually quite a clean area because I've been wire weeding the hell out of it. If this was crap and metal and I'd been going that way, I'd be trying to weld onto dirty metal as it were whereas if I'm welding back having just welded a bit it's clean if that makes sense so you'll see this first one where we've got those oxides I'll have to pull the trigger for quite a long time um, to get it to weld nicely but I will I'll do it wrong and I'll go that way I don't know I don't know whether you can see that but my weld is jumping on and off more than it would be had I been going that way and sort of that way. See, it's altogether a pain in the arse and I'm ending up with a really shitty world, so I'm not going to demonstrate that technique of failure anymore. Uh, hopefully you'll see a difference when I go the other way around. And I'm not going to clean it off, so it, I'm not cheating. I'm just going to tack there right, this way and hopefully you should see a nice clean world. See that was a lot easier for me. They've sat flatter because I've kept the heat in there and um, because I was going straight on to basically a spit that was still red hot molten metal it was quite happy about it and then this one I'm going to use the gravity to help me come down here I will clean it off Incidentally, I'm putting a lot of heat into this area and if this was a flatter panel like a wheel arch or you know joining that bit on here I wouldn't be putting anywhere near as much heat in or putting as many tacks on each other in such a close short of time, uh, space of time because um, it would just warp it but because we've got lots of curves which have had the effect of stiffening the metal it isn't going to warp or you'd have to put a hell of a lot more heat in before it did warp so um, I'm quite relaxed about doing it this way So that is our <coughs> lower section of wing joined in. Now I've just got to work out what the hell I'm doing around here. I'll probably end up cutting a slot in there, hammering that bit round, um, and then hammering that bit in. In fact, why don't I show you? It's been a while since I looked at this bit. So that's where the inner 
wheel arch thing, inner wing, whatever, terminated. So I've written, drawn roughly where I thought that line was going to be, and it turns out I wasn't that far off. What I've got to do now is that if I smashed that bit onto there, it wouldn't, it would just straighten that bit or vice versa. So if I cut a slot there, might need two in fact, but then I should be able to start bending this onto here. Um, what I need to do also is put my plug weld holes along there. Unfortunately, my plug weld hole thing is a compressed air powered one and the compressor's up the top of the garden and I can't be bothered to move it, so I'll probably have to drill them freehand, which I might do now. That's a fun drill and proper little drill bits. Found my drill, I'm just doing pilot holes with a little drill bit. And then I'll go through and do some big ones later. enough so, let's put a hole in that bit too just because we can I'm actually going to deeper the back sides now because otherwise when I smash it up it'll get stuck in the way. I should have done that with these two but I forgot.
start welding this. Um, I do want to go and check again on another car how this should be finished. Hopefully we're not a million miles off. You can kind of see what I've done. That's the inner panel coming down. Um, that needs to be trimmed off and dressed around. That one needs to be pushed up or that bit pushed down. But let's go and have a look on another car and see how it compares. This car has mud flaps on it, so that doesn't really help a lot. But you can see how the, obviously the panel isn't straight, it comes up this way. There's nothing there. The first bit where there's a flange is back here, probably, I don't know, 10, 15 mil back from there. And there's not much of a particularly high upstand. But when you look at the car like this, definitely doesn't flare forward as much as I thought. In fact, it's kind of parallel and then leading back. So that's what we've got to try and replicate. Interestingly though, the wheel arch does come down and tuck in further forward, almost like a forward projection, which I didn't know. Oh yeah, look at that. Well, I was just poking at that there hole um, when I was interrupted by running out of batteries, but probably a good thing because it was getting slightly obscene. Anyway, back onto Dotty. I'm not going to have an opportunity to do too much more tonight, but I do just want to check in my mind before I put any more welds in that I'm in the right place. And I think I am. That's all following basically the right kind of line. Um, I've got enough metal there. I can hack that bit off, so that's all good. I'm going to throw a couple more tacks in there, fit up some of these, and then um, just linish that. Maybe put a cut in there and roll that over a bit more. Just done a few more little chops around there into there so I could fold it up and have it looking nice. Just going to tack these sort of segments together first. Um, and once I'm happy where they are, then I can plug weld through onto the panels behind. <coughs> I've kind of run out of time tonight. Shit to do, but you can see what I'm going for and how close we are now, or I am, to finishing it. So, um, hopefully, I'll finish out this coming weekend and also do a little video on other welding things. But I am really happy with that. Looks really nice. And considering I fabricated that from scratch and the bulk of it was done in about 20 minutes, it's not bad.